Hey guys, this is Nick from ForexNooms.com with some daily price action analysis. A few people emailed me about uh, the lack of analysis on Friday and Monday. So I just thought I'd start off this video with clearing that up. Um, basically, Friday is not really a trading day for me. Friday is generally a day that I use to close any open trades I have. I may, on a rare occasion, take a trade on Friday, but that's only if it triggers on Friday morning. And I think that I have enough time to actually hit my target on that trade. So Friday is generally not a trading day for me. Monday is a day that I will take a trade, but I don't really get trades that often on Monday. That's because I trade reversal setups and it usually takes a little while for a reversal setup to form. So, you know, you're not going to get a reversal setup. Generally speaking, you're not going to get one that forms on Monday. Um, unless it formed uh, at the end of last week. So if it formed on Friday and then it triggers on, on Monday, that is a possibility. But generally speaking, Monday for my strategy is a pretty quiet day. So unless there's something analysis worthy, I'm not going to be doing analysis on Mondays. So I'll probably only be doing analysis Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Those are my main trading days. Wednesday being pretty much the main trading day. So... Uh, let's get started with today's analysis. Um, okay, GBP, JPY, we're going to start with that. Uh, let's drop down to the free hour. And for those of you who don't know how this analysis works, what I basically do is go through every single time frame for every pair on my list. And the reason I do that is that way I can see price action across all the time frames and I can see if there's any potential setup coming. I do this anywhere between three to five, three to six times per day. It really just depends on how much time I have uh, with my charts that day. So the more often you do this, the more likely you will catch any price action setups that form. Um, but three times per day is, is more than enough uh, if you're trading eight hour charts. So eight hour charts and above that is. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna start with the three hour, go four, five, six, and I know I say this every time I do one of these videos, but these odd time frames here, these weird ones, like the five hour, seven hour, nine, 10, 11, these are time frames I don't actually trade. I just have these time frames open. That way I can get a different view of price action because I feel that the more you understand about what price is doing in an area, the more informed a trading decision you can make. So I don't take trades based on formations on the five, seven, nine, 10, or 11 hour charts. But I just like to see what price is doing when I look at uh, these time frames. That's why I look at them, just to see what price is doing. The time frames I trade mostly are free, four, six, eight, 12, and daily. The six hour and the eight hour are my favorite time frames currently, six and eight hour. 12 hour is also pretty awesome. Um, I know a lot of you don't have access to these time frames, but uh, you probably should do. Um, I know a lot of people love MetaTrader 4, but MetaTrader 4 is 10 year old technology and it's really, really outdated at this point. If you can upgrade your trading platform, you really, really should. Um, MetaTrader 4 is just not, uh, not really applicable to modern trading, in my opinion, modern Forex trading. But anyway, let's keep going with the analysis. Uh, so we're looking at GP, JPY, we're up to the 7, 8. There's actually a setup here, uh, well, a potential setup forming yesterday. See this indecision candle here? But price kept moving up, so it didn't really work out. Yeah, there's no real potential here for anything. I'm just going to pop this back down to the right spot on my list. Not sure why I have Euro GP up here, but let's go through it anyway. Three, four, five, nothing forming. Yeah, nothing really forming on that pair. AUD, USD. I'm just going to rearrange these pairs on. Oh, one sec, I'm just going to close this down. All right, sorry about that. Uh, okay, let's have a look at GPUSD real quick. Three hour, four hour, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
and daily and nothing really forming on GPUSD right now. This is pretty normal for Tuesday though. Tuesday, at least at the start of the day, is pretty slow generally. Nothing much happening on uh, EURUSD. Nothing really worth trading anyway. Let's check out AUDUSD. And nothing happening there. Ooh, USD CAD. That looks interesting. But let's start with the lowest time frame. I actually think this trade was actually posted to the to the forum, come to think of it, but not on the daily. I think it was posted on the six hour. Uh, there is potential here on the daily, but it's probably going to be a bit of a tricky trade uh, risk reward ratio wise. Uh, I don't think it's going to be very feasible, to be honest. Um, I think this trade was posted as a six hour chart trade, but by the time that indecision closed, it wasn't really that good on the six hour anymore. It is OK on the four hour, but I don't really see much potential for this trade at this point. Uh, the only place it looks decent at the moment is the daily. And the risk reward ratio is just going to be really tough uh, to make work. Uh, I am going to keep it at the top of my list. We'll see how the candle closes. Then we'll do some proper analysis on it. Um, you know, I'll try to figure out an entry and a target and see if I could get a good risk to reward ratio on this. So I'll keep it open and I'll see how it goes. But I'm not going to be holding my breath with this one. I... Uh, I don't think it's actually going to turn into a trade, but still, I've been wrong before about these things, so it's worth keeping an eye on the setup here. Uh, USDJPY, let's take a quick look. Starting with 3 hour, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, daily. Set up on the daily, probably not. A really a tradable setup that lower wick was too too long but it's too late anyway this was not a setup that would be taken uh this week this was uh last week but uh if anyone is in this i probably wouldn't have entered because of that lower wick it would have made risk reward ratio pretty much impossible but if you're in this this is definitely a position that you want to hold on to because we've just seen a higher high there so what I always say is it's in a buyer's nature to make higher highs and higher lows. It's in a seller's nature to make lower lows and lower highs. So right now what we're seeing is a higher high and a higher low. So that tells us that buyers are in control of price. So buyers are in control of price here. If you're already long, hold that position. You're a JPY. Let's look at what we can see here. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, nothing much is going to be happening with this pair. Yep. GP, JPY, we already looked at. Let's take a quick look at New Zealand USD, but it doesn't look like anything's happening here either. The way price formed at the start of this week has made it uh, hard for us to get trades this early in the week. We're probably not going to see very many trades until Wednesday, Thursday this week. Well, on most pairs, that is. USDCHF actually looks like it has a potential trade forming right now. It's going to go through all the time frames and see where this looks best. So it looks good on the 12, on the 6, on the 4. Actually, it looks very similar across all those time frames. Uh, okay, this is definitely something worth keeping an eye on, USDCHF. Um, this indecision candle might be a little tricky to trade. Just the way it's formed, it's going to be a little hard to get risk reward ratio, uh, a good risk reward ratio here. But it should be doable. Uh, let's take a quick, a very quick look. Since this one has potential to close uh, pretty soon, so... All right, we got 1.5, even if it's just your first targets there. Yeah. 
Yeah, this trade definitely has some potential. Uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one. So USDCHF, four hour, six hour. Not sure where I'll take it. Four hour, maybe six hour, maybe 12 hour, maybe. We'll just see how it forms. Uh, this is definitely a pair to keep an eye on. Uh, let's take a quick look at GP, AUD, see what we see here. There's potential here, but I don't know. The, the indecision is below the resistance area and it's already started moving down. So probably, I would not have traded that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So that is pretty much it for the analysis. So to summarize, USD CHF has a potential trade forming. USD CAD, yeah, maybe on the daily, maybe. Looks like it's pushing down right now, but if this closes as indecision, I might, I might consider trading it. But it's got, uh, you know, it's got a fair, fair bit of time before it closes. So we'll just see how it goes. Uh, other than that, guys, I think that is it for today's analysis. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. I'll uh, see you for tomorrow's.